We're back with the screen team, and we're ready to re- to review the hottest movie out right now. It's Avengers: Age of Ultron. We've got Michael, we've got Kadem, two of the biggest Marvel fans in the world. I don't know why, but they are. Yes, I think so, you just said Marvel fan. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I yeah, like, I like the blue. Which one's blue? <laughs> blue. Yeah. Blue's nice. I like yeah. the cat eye Marvels myself. Cat- there you go. But you guys love love Marvel, right? Oh yes. yeah, definitely, without a doubt. That's a shame. Who's Batman? You know, it's kind of mm. that feeling to me. <laughs> <laughs> Who even is? You know, I think Batman and Superman, by them, both of them together, could beat anybody in, in the Marvel universe. I am looking, re- I am really looking forward to Batman versus Superman next year, though. Oh my yes, gosh! Sir. Yes, sir. Um, all right, Age of Ultron. Were we fans? Yes, Michael. Yes, yes, what? yes, and yes, yes. <laughs> Sounds good, Kato. <laughs> uh, fanboy. Yeah. Uh, I dress up like Chris Hemsworth every night. Make myself go to sleep easier. Like I said, you I, are I bet four. Rachel likes that. She loves it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one continues off um, kind of after the uh, elements that happened in uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, correct? Yes. So there's no shield. Whoops, spoiler. Spoiler oh, alert! Oh, um, shield has been kind of put to the wayside, and our, our Avengers have uh, been uh, put together to... Uh, that the first scene, they're they're trying to infiltrate. What, what are they uh, trying to Hydra base? A Hydra base. They they've alluded to the fact that they've been <laughs> for like between the events of Winter Soldier and this new Avengers, they've been infiltrating and pretty much just demolishing a whole bunch of Hydra bases around the world. For those of you who don't know, Hydra is like the big villainous organization, like one of the one of the biggest ones in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, it includes villains such as the Red Skull from the Avengers: Age of Ultron. He was kind of like the founder of it. Uh, Baron Strucker, who was the bald guy with the monocle in like the first couple of scenes in the movie, he really should have needed more scenes, but he was there, so I was glad about that anyway. Right. Um, a lot of more villains that haven't been introduced in the movie series yet, but I feel like are going to. So, yeah, Hydra is like the enemy, the anti shield, basically. Okay. So after they they defeat uh, one of the bases, uh, Tony Stark kind of gets a brainchild with uh, Bruce Banner. Is that right? Is that yes. Bruce? Yeah, is Bruce that, Banner, is, is that the, Hulk, the Hulk? Incredible Hulk. Is, yes. is that the Hulk's? Side name or whatever, Bruce Banner. That's, that's his real name. Shh, that's his real name. Anybody. All right, all right. So they decide. <laughs> hush, hush. They decide they need somebody other than, I guess, the Avengers to be able to protect the world. So they try to create this um, artificial intelligence. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. what, where, where do they create? They they create Ultron, right? Yes, basically, Ultron is. Of course, he's not just the robot in the suit. He's the mind that's inside it. Um, throughout the movie, he's constantly downloading his consciousness into the internet and just basically transferring it into different bunch of robot suits. Mm-hmm. So his robot, he, Ultron, gets destroyed like several times through the movie, but he never really gets destroyed until right. the very end. Spoiler alert! But so, yeah. so uh, they, they create this me, be- this being, and he turns bad, and the Avengers have to go and destroy him. Basically, that that's our plot, right? Yep, that is the bare minimum plot yes all right you, if you haven't seen it you don't need to go see it now so you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> um okay so um why do you guys like this film so much Kaden? why why is why is this film so amazingly awesome why can you pick a reason no I, I really can't you know there's so many i love tony stark to sarcasm and mm-hmm. everything like that and then hulk love hulk don't get me wrong I love I was, all the superheroes. I, I was actually a big fan of the Hulk and Black Widow romance. You know, usually um, little side romance plots like that like seem like unnecessary to me, but this one seemed like it was actually real, and I actually enjoyed it. I'm not a chick, trust me. When the Hulk left, man, it was sad. I know. Spoiler. spoiler. Yeah, <laughs> I came spoiler with the spoiler, alert. but I, I had <laughs> but, to get my feels out there. Just so you guys know, there might be spoilers in this show. It hurt my feelings. I love I you guys. know. Um, he'll be back. You know he'll be back. <laughs> Mark Ruffalo is like the best Hulk that they that there's ever been on screen. I do agree with that. So, so you're back. so you're a big fan of Thor Kadem. Um, he, he had, I guess, the least amount of screen time out of any of the Avengers in this film. Yeah. Um, obviously, yeah. did that bother you? A little bit, yeah. You know, I wanted to dress up like Chris Hemsworth as Thor and go yeah. to the movie you theater Chris and maybe just stand in front of the screen to have more <laughs> screen time for him. Yeah. Did, did did you guys understand his kind of his little side plot in the movie? Because it was a little kind of hard to understand. Um, for, there's there's a scene where he's got to go off and and uh, do like a a, a side um, mm. a, a side story element to the to the movie. Did you guys? Did you guys I did understand for the most it? part. Yeah. yeah. Um, a couple of days ago, I actually read this article online where they actually had a lot more to that little side plot with Thor, mm. and so the movie would be like three and a half hours long. Which I don't think any of us would have a problem with that. I mean, it's no. the Avengers, you know. But, you know, Joss Whedon was pressured by 
whatever big cheeses that were there to cut the screen time, you know, cut those elements out. So he was forced to take a big chunk out of that Thor plot line out. And the movie is still awesome as it is, even without those. But uh, yeah, it is a little hard to understand. Yeah. But at its barest, you can still follow that. Okay, obviously when he was gone, Thor figured something out. You know, because he can see he can see his visions. Their visions that only last like a half second long. But if you're quick enough to notice them, you'd be like, oh yeah, I see what you did there. You know, if I was like the head of the the Marvel studio, I'd have gotten rid of Thor. Um, I would have gotten rid of uh, the Hulk. Um, I would have definitely limited Iron Man's time. It would have just basically been a Captain America film with Black Widow in it. That's why you're not the head of Marvel Studios. That's true. That's very, very true. A little bit more Black Widow would have been okay. (laughs) See? Look at this. I've already got a fan. There's never such a thing as too much Black Widow. (laughs) Exactly. I've already got a fan. Call me. Um, Okay. Um, So you guys both liked it. Um, Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I I, I believe on my Salted Popcorn (laughs) review, I gave it 9.5 out of 10. That's that's it's a pretty, pretty darn, darn high. That's a pretty darn good uh, review. Um, are they going to make a th- another one? Hopefully, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> Avengers, <laughs> Avengers Infinity, a billion dollar profit. You think they'll make another one? A- Avengers Infinity War is going to be a two part series. The first one is scheduled for May in twenty seventeen, with the second part in twenty eighteen. Hmm. You know it's what? It's going to. Sorry, go ahead. No. Um, my main issue with this film, this film was good. I loved it. I didn't like it as as much as uh, the first Avengers mm-hmm. movie. The first Avengers movie was just, it was so fun. Mm-hmm. It was uh, just, a, you know, your typical kind of blockbuster popcorn film. I liked oh, it. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one was similar, but it was, it kind of, I guess my issue was I kind of know what's going, what's going to happen with the story, you know, especially with the, what kind of elements are going to happen with uh, Captain America Civil War. So I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to those elements. Oh, yeah. So this one, to me, just kind of felt like... Uh, it mm-hmm. almost felt like uh, Twin Towers of, of uh, you know, Lord of the Rings. Like, you're just waiting for the next chapter. And this one was kind of like, oh, all right, can we... Can we right. I think is the issue, 2016 here yet, you know? I, th- I think the issue is that there's... You're, <clears throat> Hollywood is never going to be able to make another The Avengers. But when The Avengers came out, it was... It is one of the biggest movies in cinema history as right. far as grossing and popularity. You know, it's like number three. Uh, it's like the third highest grossing movie of all time. And they're... No matter how how many heroes, how much action they put in these next movies, they're never going to be able to recreate that feeling of they're finally doing it. They're finally putting all these superheroes together in the one movie, making an Avengers movie. As awesome as Age of Ultron was, it just didn't have that much hype as when the first Avengers came out. Not that that's a bad thing; you really just can't help that. Right, right, right. But I think that's I think that's the one of the bigger reasons. Now why. you just said that uh, you know Avengers was like one of the third top grossing movies. Um, Star Wars Episode Seven is going to smoke all of that nonsense out of the water. So I, it's definitely just, got to get up there. Yeah. No, it's going to listen. Listen. Are you <laughs> listening to me? It's going to smoke that. It's going to smoke uh, Titanic. It's going to smoke Avatar. <clears throat> Say goodbye to all the box office records. Star Wars I, Episode Seven. I agree with everything except here we event, come. Uh, except okay. it's going to at least come. tie with. The, it's it's, it's, it's going to at least get up there with Avengers. All right. Um, so, are you guys um, excited about? Um, uh, obviously, Captain America: Civil War. You guys excited about uh, mm-hmm. that particular movie and the mm-hmm. Avengers: Infinity War? Oh yeah, definitely. There okay. are going to be. This is a great time to be a geek, man. So many superhero okay. movies are coming out, include and, and Star Wars. Star Wars and Jurassic World is going to come out. I am so excited for that. But also, Ant Man. I'm actually one of the few people who's excited for the Fantastic Four reboot. Yes, the, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, you you seen the tra- <laughs> you've seen the trailers, right? This it looks awesome. Uh, it looks like it's. I, yeah. Uh, I so, are, are, I got to ask. I got to ask the Marvel fans here. Are we excited that Spider Man is back in the Marvel movie universe? Not particularly. Ooh. I mean, what about feisty. you, sir? A little bit feisty. What about you, sir? <laughs> uh, I like Spider Man. You know, more when you kind of splat him on the floor. <laughs> but I like Spider Man. It's just Andrew Garfield know. is Spider Man to me. Oh, just shooting webs man. out of your hands and flying—that's cool. But Thor's got a he hammer. Has a fly. <laughs> He's no. got a hammer. Okay. Sorry. Asa Butterfield, who was in Ender's Game, if you any, if anyone saw that movie, I did. It's actually not that bad, but he's in talks to play Spider Man, and I cannot say no to that decision enough. If Asa Butterfield is playing Spider Man, I'm not going to watch those movies. Yes, I, I do not <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I do not see him as Peter Parker. I'm sorry. I just well then, know. then then you're not going to be seeing any more Marvel movies for the next ten years. <laughs> Because that's most likely what's going to happen. I think he's he's supposed to be in like one of the upcoming Avengers. I think was he going to be in Civil War or no? Yes. Was he? I'll probably watch. But 
like standalone Spider-Man movies, I probably won't watch anymore. But if he's in, yeah, Avengers and the Civil War and stuff like that, yeah, of course I'm going to watch it. But like, I'm getting tired of standalone Spider-Man movies. All right, uh, Michael. Before uh, we leave, uh, hit up your website one more time, sir. All right, my website is called Salted Popcorn. It's got a Facebook page. Go ahead and like it if you like. I post all kinds of. Uh, new and upcoming movie reviews, not just comic book movies, but also some of the bigger bigger name movies that are coming out. So little things that I find interesting as well. Um, it's also got links to a blog that I have where I post uh, movie reviews. I will be, I plan on seeing the new Mad Max on this coming Tuesday, and shortly after, I will be posting my review of that movie. The latest one is Avengers: Age of Ultron. As I said before, I gave it a nine point five out of ten. But you can see the entire review at, I believe it's it, it's on Wix, but you can find the link to it on the Salt of Popcorn Facebook page. Very good. Katum, you have your website, ThorLovers.com. Is that right? Uh, yes. It's basically just about 137 pictures of me dressing up like Chris uh, Hemsworth. Yes. Uh, different you know, ways to hold a hammer and to feel like uh, a god, basically. Greatest website ever. Very good. I'm Very kidding, good. guys. Just, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. Are you really? I totally thought you guys were being serious. <laughs> Coming up next week on the screen team, we'll have uh, Tanika and Jamie in the studio. We're going to be uh, reviewing uh, Serenity, uh, directed by your boy, uh, Josh, Josh Whedon, uh, Whedon. Uh, Bottle Shock, and uh, we'll be uh, reviewing, uh, like Michael, uh, the new uh, Mad Max film. That's coming your way next Saturday at 6 p.m. here on the screen team. For Michael, Katum, and Chris, we are the screen team on today's talk, 930 KWOC.